Alright guys, and welcome to the channel. Unreal 5 is here, and I can't lie, it's pretty good. Somewhere between the last playtest and where we are now, the devs have actually cooked. Like, genuinely. They have found massive improvements. Now, it's not perfect, and it still has a very long way to go, but finally things look promising. But it wasn't plain sailing for me. It's taken me a few days to get my performance that I desired, and then a bit more messing on, and I actually exceeded it. Yes, I am now getting better FPS than I was on Unreal 4 Squad. I've been playing Squad at 4K resolution, and I am somehow now getting between 100 and 120 FPS, some maps even more. So, that's what this video will be about my graphic settings and some advice on things related to it, but before we get into that there's a few sections from the squad's Unreal 5 Q&A I want to run over with you guys because it is very important to know before we get into my settings. So first up is the minimum and recommended specs have changed. Squad claims that the minimum now to somehow play squad is Windows 10 with a i5-8400 or a Ryzen 3600. 8 gigabytes of RAM and a GTX 1060. Now let's be honest here, and unfortunately I know there's a few of you watching this video will have exactly these pieces, but this is all going on about 8 or 10 year old now, which in the world of technology is almost prehistoric. I mean 8 gigabytes of RAM by itself is a huge handicap for anything these days, and I'll be honest, it's kind of the point now even 16 gigabyte is still very restrictive. I mean, <clears throat> just 8 gigabytes trying to like watch something on Netflix is a huge effort. But, you know, somehow Squad can allegedly be run with this type of tech, although I can't imagine the experience being much cop. Now, the recommended is a bit more beefed up. They ask for Windows 11, a Ryzen 5600, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and a 3060 or AMD 6600 XT. This is all stuff from this decade now, but even then, you know, 2021, that's still like four going on five years ago now, which again is still a very long time in the land of technology. Now, one thing to keep in mind is these will be based upon 1080p resolution, maybe 720p could be the only way to get it from minimum, but usually the current recommended specs will end up becoming the minimum in time to come. So if you are looking to upgrade, you do want to aim higher than the current recommended, at least if you can afford so. For GPUs, the old trusty loyal servant that was the 10 series, it just won't cut it anymore, especially in the modern era of gaming, due to the heavy use of upscaling in DLSS, which I have to admit in squad, is pretty much a must these days. So think like, 20 series, 30 series, 40 series, a 2080 super or a 3060 onwards, because these cards all have what is required to run DLSS. But I wouldn't want to risk like a 3050 or a 4050 for example, as that could soon struggle due to how limited the VRAM capabilities are on those cards. Look, this video, I'm just trying to do what I can to help each and every one. I can't guarantee that this will help you because there will be some of you that unfortunately will have to upgrade, but for those of you who don't, I really hope this uh, well, you never know, maybe some of these settings I've done could actually be worthwhile to you. So that moves us on to the current squad build. And one of the first things you want to actually do is make sure that your GPU drivers are absolutely up to date. This genuinely made a difference for me, so get on that as soon as possible. And they also recommend Windows updates. So make sure that those are up to date as well. However, something also worth mentioning is if you're on a Windows 11 build, that is KM5063878, get off that as soon as possible. It's been known to kill SSDs, and I had a few friends of mine shout at me to update it right fucking now. There's a video in the description linked for those of you who are interested in knowing a bit more about that, because I know there's a few people who are quite tech savvy. Good little watch you. Now, if you are now upon installing Unreal 5 Squad, if you are really, really struggling, it is heavily advised that you clear your in-game cache. Before you do that though, make sure to save your key bindings in the key binds menu down here. That means once you've cleared the cache, you can just simply load up your key bindings and you don't have to mess about setting them all up again. 
Now, to remove your cache, you can do that by pressing the clear cache button in the settings menu, or you can delete the entire folder by going into the drive it is installed on, and follow this path, which I'll leave on screen for a short little while, or, you know, just pause the video. I'm pretty sure if you pause the video as well, it helps with my engagement. So yeah, pause the video. Good time to subscribe if you haven't. Once found, just delete the saved data file. Now, what clearing the cache generally does is it clears out temporary files, such as downloaded game assets, shaders, and you know that the game uses to run more efficiently. Now, if these come across and they're broken, deleting it can resolve issues caused by these corrupted or outdated temporary files, which should hopefully lead to a more stable gaming experience. It is also advised that you unsubscribe from all of mods for the time being too, especially as there are still some mods trying to find Unreal 4. So apparently that can cause major issues and in some cases can stop the game loading up entirely. Once you've done all of that, you want to load up Squad and head into your settings menu and pay attention. Squad has stated that the graphics defaults have all shifted and everything has gone up a couple of notches. Unreal 5 medium preset is the equivalent of Unreal 4's Epic. Now this is a huge shift and will catch a lot of people out. So if you are on medium on Unreal 4, you may want to hit low to get the same visual results. However, Offworld have also recommended that you hit the defaults button as that will run a benchmarking algorithm on your GPU that will determine sensible default settings for your hardware. So it's a pretty good idea to use this as your starting point. Now this isn't always bomb proof, but it is a reasonable benchmark to see where you are and see how it feels, and then we can try and tweak things from there. Now one thing I will say though, which I should have mentioned earlier, apart from, you know, asking you guys to subscribe, is make sure that Windows has set your monitor's refresh rate to the correct one. Windows loves to change this for no reason at all, so if you have a 144Hz monitor, make sure it's set to 144. And if you have multiple monitors, make sure that they are all also correct. Before we move on to my settings, here's the final bit from the Q&A, and this is also an important one to remember. Textures being temporarily low quality, especially noticeable on visual effects for the first time they are playing, is a compromise we have taken for now. A goal with Unreal 5 was to reduce hitching. We found that some hitches are caused by some effects having very high resolution textures that were getting loaded. We made that loading spread over time and not stall the game anymore. As a result, there is visual degradation in the beginning. This will get resolved as we optimize the visual effects. And for those of you who are noticing that there are some pretty long load times, the game now pre-compiles shaders on load to avoid hitching whilst playing. This is most significant when loading into the first map and won't be needed after. Shaders are stored locally, they will only be recompiled when the GPU driver gets updated. All regular load times are reduced compared to Unreal 4. So keep this in mind when you start playing Squad, because I noticed this myself and I wondered if it was my graphics settings. But speaking of which, on to my settings. Now don't take this all as gospel, but it works for me. So if it helps even just one person, I've done my job. I know my PC is up in the upper echelons of uh, specifications, but it is no NASA PC by any margins. I have a Ryzen 9950X3D paired up with a 4070Ti and 32GB of RAM, but this allows me to play Squad in 4K. When I tried it on my 1080p monitor, oh yeah, my FPS did fairly fly off the scale. Right, now I have my game set at borderless because I am forever tabbing in and out of the game, be it due to do admin related duties or stuff related to my content, but I'm always tabbing in and out, so being full screen, it's no good for me. But if you play squad and generally play it for longer sessions or you never tap out, then you probably want to go full screen. You want to set your resolution to what your monitor is. As you can see, mine is a is 3840 by 2160. FPS, I've basically capped mine both in menu and in game to my desired preference. 60 in menu, as I don't see the point in having it any higher and any less than that is a bit janky. And 144 in game, because that is my monitor's refresh rate. However, I doubt I'll hit that consistently, but it's nice when I do. Now, you will notice that I am using frame generation, although all throughout the playtests, this never worked for me at all. But now it's live, it's working. 
and it's working well. So I have that enabled and set to auto for now. And with that, I also have low latency enabled. Scope resolution scale is set to 100. Any lower and scopes start getting really blurry and grainy. Any higher, it will basically just smoke out your GPU. But my scope FPS is set to 120. Unlimited, it gets a bit wonky and I can get some FPS hitching. And 60 or 30 is just too jittery, especially if you're trying to hit a moving target going left to right. So 120 gives me a smooth balance. For AA, I am using DLSS and it is set to quality. I was using TSR originally as it did give me a very clean result, but performance was limited. DLSS, however, is coming on strong and I'd argue now after a few days, I think it looks better. But I do want to point out a few things, especially if you've cleared your cache. Deleting the game's cache will not affect your save data, game progress or DLSS files. However, you may experience a temporary performance dip and some stuttering as the game regenerates its shader cache file for your graphics card upon first launch after clearing the game's cache. Now, DLSS works by using an AI network trained on high resolution images by a supercomputer to upscale lower resolution game frames to higher resolutions in real time. Boosting performance whilst improving image quality. It relies on dedicated AI accelerating tensor cores found in the NVIDIA GeForce RTX GPU, such like your 20, 30, 40, 50 series. The technology also includes components like DLSS frame generation, which I mentioned earlier, which inserts AI generated frames for increased smoothness, and DLSS ray reconstruction, which uses AI to denoise ray traced images. Or simply put, DLSS runs the game at a lower resolution than your monitor is displaying and then upscales it so you get the benefit of running a lower resolution with better performance whilst not really losing that much if any image quality. Now as time goes on DLSS on your machine will get better and better or at least it bloody well should do. Now I have my NIS sharpening set to zero. I feel having this up higher can make images a bit noisy. But one thing I will very quickly say on the DLSS quality settings, you know, balanced is surprisingly good. I'm running quality because I just want that extra bit of sharpness when I'm using my optics for recording footage and I want my foliage to be as clean as I can. I can't quite use DLAA yet, but I might try that in a week or two once I've, I suppose, dialed everything in a little bit more. But feel free to mess on with the DLSS presets. You might be quite surprised as to how this runs on your machine. Now moving on to my actual settings, and it is pretty simple, so we'll box this off really quickly. View distance quality is set to high, although I am going to experiment with Epic very soon. Material quality is medium, with filtering set to 8. Now, do not enable uncap texture pool size. It always used to create a VRAM memory leak, and I wouldn't be surprised if it still does it now. Shadows and lighting all set to medium, with particles on medium. Now, Ocean is set to low with Wake Simulation off. Again, I've left Wake Simulation off because in previous builds it created all kinds of problems, so I didn't bother with that. But water uses a lot of resources. And I'm nowhere near water enough to warrant having the water looking super nice and pretty, so free up your FPS with this. Now, post-processing is medium, even though everything is set at, even though everything is zero at default and I have boosted my gamma slightly. And that's it for the squad settings in-game. I do boost my digital vibrance in my NVIDIA control panel to make colours pop a bit more, as the game can look very grayscale, but on top of making the game look nicer, it actually helps me to see enemies, especially in the greener maps. I seem to struggle with lots of green on green on green. But there we have it. I really hope this helps you all, and please let me know what kind of performance improvements you've seen in the comments down below. I'm still waiting to see a lot more done now for server-side performance, but between all of us at Dead and Dismount and the guys at PSG, we seem to have cooked up something that's been working really nice for our server since the updates come out, so that also hasn't been as bad as I expected it to be. But yeah, I'll keep you all filled in as things go on. Thank you all for watching, take care, and I'll see you in the next video or on my server. Good night.